today we as a party in government felt it necessary for us to make comments on two issues that we feel that cannot go unnoticed namely the arrest of the vice president or acting president of the Patriotic Front, Honorable Given Lubinda. And number two, we want to comment on government's announced maize floor price that FRIA will be buying the maize for this particular year's harvest. As a party in government, we feel it is necessary for us to add our voice to the many comments that have been made by citizens regarding the arrest of the acting president of the Patriot Front, Honorable Given Lubinda, on account of alleged failure to report himself before the Parliamentary Privileges Committee in accordance with the requirements and as provided for by Section 10 of the National Assembly Powers and Privileges Act Amendment Number 13 of 2016 which brought into effect a requirement that once a person is summoned before the Parliamentary Privileges Committee, such a one should produce themselves before the Privileges Committee, which is the disciplinary committee of Parliament for those individuals who violate parliamentary rules, regulations, and or conduct of business as such, such as to bring the name of Parliament or the National Assembly into public audio or ridicule. We want to urge citizens, particularly those in the political arena, not to politicize the arrest of Honorable Given Lubinda. As fellow citizens, we, as UPND, do sympathize with the situation that Honorable Lubinda has found himself, but find it necessary to say it is a good lesson to him and to all of us in leadership that when you are in leadership, you should make laws generally for the good governance of the nation and not targeting individuals. We are aware that this law was brought into effect by the Patriotic Front. And Honorable Given Lund had the opportunity to have been Minister of Justice. At the material time, we, as UPND, objected to this punitive you know, provision in Parliament, but as usual, they used the arrogance of numbers to defeat us and brought this law into effect. And we all remember the motivation. The motivation was that previously, President H.H., then as leader and president of the UPND, had made commentaries relating to conduct of business of parliament. And some colleagues in the Patriot Front were wishful that he should be brought before parliament so that he is embarrassed before parliament. And so they went and crafted a law targeting an individual. Look now. Look now what has happened. This is very unfortunate 
Honorable Vinda should not have found himself in this predicament. And for those, for us, who are in office, who are given the opportunity to make laws for the governance of the country, let us make laws that betters the life and livelihoods of our people and not targeting an individual so that an individual an individual's freedom of expression and speech can be stifled. It should not be like that. You recall also that this is not the only bad law that was crafted at targeting HH and or his supporters or members of parliament. You will recall that uh, the National Dialogue Forum you know, Act, which they passed, had a provision that any person who stops a member of parliament from attending the National Dialogue Forum commits an offense and is liable on conviction to two years imprisonment. The target was HH that he should not stop as his members of parliament attending the ill-fated NDF forum, which was meant to discuss Bill 10. There was also in that same act a provision that any member of parliament who fails to attend the NDF shall commit a criminal offence and is liable on conviction to two years in prison. That was targeting members of parliament of the UPND. Fortunately, that one, we defied it outrightly. We challenged them to arrest us. And we didn't attend the NDF. We told them, arrest us. And we shall go and prove our innocence in court because you are violating our freedoms. We were elected to attend parliament and when we abscond at parliament, we are never taken to police, we are never arrested. How can we be arrested for failing to attend a workshop called NDF conference? That is how they just let us go. But the law was there, they passed it. I'm giving this background to show that when you make laws to target individuals, sometimes things do backfire. And this particular law, Section 10 of the National Assembly, Powers and Privileges Act, Amendment Number 13 of 2016, has boomeranged right in the face of the patriotic front. So they should not complain. They are testing their own medicine. But I would like to indicate that for us as UPND and party in government, we see this to be a bad law. We see this to be a bad law. But for the time being, it is a law in force and enforceable by the law enforcing agencies and also the courts of law. So ours will end at sympathizing with our dear colleague, Honorable Given Lovinda. But we take note of the lesson. Make laws to govern the country better, not to target individuals. This is a lesson. Just like a lesson a number of PFMPs learned when they hurriedly passed a new constitution and supported it vigorously and robustly and voted for it without knowing that in there there was a requirement that for one to be a member of parliament you needed to be a great hope certificate holder and some of them did not have so they were left out these are serious lessons for us and for those charged with public mandate
to be able to supervise national affairs. There is no need to personalize legislation. Good laws must focus on only one thing, to look into the future generally with an intention to curb a particular mischief. And one would say it is a mischief to refuse to appear before parliament. Yes, but that is why laws assign different punishments. Laws assign different punishments. There are omissions and commissions of offenses that notwithstanding the fact that they come out of the domain of criminal law, they are still they still assign a punishment which is less punitive to a citizen. It is our contention that this particular law is punitive to citizens. Let me now talk about the issue of the announcement this morning by the Food Reserve Agency, FRIA, that for this particular year's harvest, FRA or government through FRA will be purchasing maize at 280 kwacha per 50 kg bag. Meaning that 100 kgs will be 560 kwacha. So we have seen a dramatic increase from last year's maize price of 180 kwacha to 280 kwacha. An increase of 100 kwacha, very unprecedented. Very unprecedented. But I would like to explain it as well, as a party in government, that the government thought through in coming up about this price. A number of issues were considered amongst which are the following. One, successive governments have been telling the nation a rhetorical story that would like agriculture to become a genuine alternative to mining. And they have done less to inspire farmers to expand their agricultural activity. In the past, what we have seen has have been reduced to national laborers producing cheap maize in order to feed the nation. A government whose manifesto is anchored on agriculture to become Zambia's economic turnaround point maize has been fetching in the past Many farmers had abandoned growing maize for commercial purposes. Many were growing for subsistence purposes. The cost of production of maize was outstripping the value one gets after harvest. So, this announced maize price for 2023 by FRA is in keeping with government's vision that agriculture should gravitate towards becoming Zambia's main economic activity for the majority of our people, realizing and recognizing that the majority of our citizens in the informal sector are involved in agriculture. Second, this maize price has been arrived at knowing very well that this year our expected harvest is below, is below normal. And therefore, government had to consciously 
enter the market to ensure that it is competitive in buying the maize so that it can quickly mop up the required national stocks that would support national food security for the nation. I have received a lot of calls from people asking why this, why that. The government is in this business for two main things. One, reward the farmers for their hard work and encourage those who are just seated. Hmm? Like some of us here in Choma town, just seated, doing nothing. You don't want to go and, and farm. Your friends are involved in agriculture at Ibakumushi. Look now. Those who are involved in farming are beginning to reap. So this is an opportunity. Many young people out there in the countryside are denying this country their population dividends, given that they are the majority in terms of population, but many of them shy away from agricultural productivity. They prefer to hodl around and reside in town. It is time we thought about getting involved in activities, even those that may find you reside in the rural area, because there is productivity. So, what government has done also helps us as a party in government to answer some of the calls we have heard from some sections of our community or society saying there is no money in circulation. Government has now introduced more money in circulation by paying farmers an unexpected high price. Only those who didn't involve themselves in farming will be complaining about no money. Money must be linked to productivity. That is when its currency holds value for the economy. Those days are gone of tantamen. Tantamen, start dishing out money which you can't explain where you found it. It's not linked to productivity. You are running a false and artificial economy and then you are saying we are performing. Numbers don't lie. Those who are saying in PF, if in Fiari Kowino, Fiari Angu Kirek, Indaramata Shide, Monica Nome. Numbers don't lie. PF left the economy at negative 2%. We've moved it now to about 3% growth rate, GDP, meaning 5 percentage points positive. So who is performing? Economy is not about sharing money. The economy is about productivity. So that the goods and services you produce attract value. So there is more money now in circulation through FRA. There is money in circulation through market booster loans to marketeers without discrimination of political affiliation whatsoever. There is money in circulation because social cash transfer has been doubled from where this government got it from. There is more money in circulation because as we speak right now, CEC are busy processing loans to small and medium entrepreneurs to become productive. There is more money in circulation now through the increased CDF. Many young people out there are involved in metal fabrication and carpentry, making desks. Desks which previously would have been imported or sourced from far away from where they are required. The money is going to every constituency and every ward of this country. Parents who used to pay for their children now have kept that tuition fee in their pockets. There's money in circulation because the government has availed free education. The government is paying even 
pay for examination fees. Retirees paid except Zampost and Unza, former workers from 2017. Government is already paying attention to that. KCM workers arrears paid off. Tazara workers and retirees paid off. Tazama pipeline worked on and now will begin to supply or transport direct refined final product of fuel so that the cost of fuel comes down which will inform the cost of living expected it will respond positively Lord shedding is part of history now we can write it as part of history it's gone Millimule shortages dealt with. Then you add NAPSA. 